All right, everyone, this is the fish. We uh, packaged this up in the middle of summer and um, vacuum seal it and then we freeze it and then stays in these packages. These packages are about a pound and a half, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, you know, the fillets are, you know, whatever they are. Uh, and then we just stick two in there. And if you freeze them like this, they stay very good all year long. Um, and then after a year, they're still good enough that you can thaw them and smoke them and can them. And that's what we're going to do today. So I'll keep uh, showing you the process as we go along and uh, so you can see how it's done and uh, do it yourself if you're interested. Here's one of the fun things about living in Alaska is before you get started on just about anything you're doing, you, uh, if it's outside and it's in the winter, you got to get the snow off of everything. So here's my smoker that I'm going to be putting the fish in and I'm going to be, uh, I got to take this table down too because that's where I'm going to put the burners for the, um, to make the brine and to can it. So I've got to take this down, shovel all this snow off and uh, then we'll get started. So this is when we're going to put the fish into, to, uh, you know, it makes it more salty, makes it more tender, adds some flavor to it, all right? So the only thing that I put in my brine is salt. A lot of people put things like brown sugar, other spices in it. I've done that before. I found that that hasn't really helped very much. Uh, it doesn't really change the flavor. It's the smoky flavor that I like, and we're going to get that on the smoker. So uh, I'm not going to put anything other than salt in there. So my recipe for this is that I put one and a half cups of salt into one gallon of water. So I got my eight gallon pot here. So I'm going to put about three gallons of water into this so that there's plenty of room for the fish to go in there after that, but that the water will cover all of it. And then I'm going to put, like I said, one and a half cups per gallon uh, into that water. Here's the brine. So if you look in here, it's still a little bit cloudy inside this pot. What we want to do is we want to stir this and heat it up enough so that all of the salt, you know, disassociates into its ions, right? So you want it to look like completely clear water when you're done. And we are almost there. So it's looking pretty good. Didn't have to heat this up very much. And you always want to test it. And yeah, that's really salty. So, looking good so far. Here we are three hours later. We got all of the fish out of the brine and we've rinsed them off in some warm water so we get all the salt off of them because we don't want uh, salty water staying on them while they're smoking. Uh, I'm going to go get the smoker started and we're going to uh, dry these off and put them on the smoker and get them smoking. I'm gonna smoke them for about three to four hours. That's what I found is pretty, uh, pretty good. So another great thing about Alaska is that it is only 4.50 and it is already nighttime here because it is near the solstice in December. <laughs> so you just got to learn to do things in the dark. Uh, I'm going to get the smoker going. This is my smoker. <clears throat> it's actually a heated one. Uh, I don't use it for with the heat. Uh, I am actually a fan of the cold smoking method. So I have a smoke ring here. This is a stainless steel ring that you put pellets in and you light them on fire with uh, like a camp torch and then it just smolders all the way around here and smokes it. I just use this really as a box for the smoke to stay in, right? So you concentrate it. So we're going to get this going and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes.
I don't know if you can see it, but it started to snow out here. So I just want to show you what this looks like. We got the smoke ring going. And even though that doesn't look like very much smoke coming out of there, it's going to fill this box. And once I close this door and it's going to be like very smoky in there. Uh, and that's going to burn. I've only filled that up a little over halfway and that'll probably burn for about four hours. As you can see, we got the layers of fish in here. And I also got some meat for tacos tomorrow because it's Taco Tuesday. And uh, that's some uh, prime chuck roast that's going to be smoked. And then I'm going to put it in the slow cooker to uh, get it so it falls apart. And then we uh, season it up and yeah, makes great taco meat. So anyway, here we go. We're going to close this door. And this is going to sit out here for about four hours. Now, it's about 21 degrees out here in Anchorage. And you might think, well, isn't your fish going to freeze? Surprisingly, with just that little bit of heat that is generated from the... Um, oh, the pellets burning, smoldering in there, it will not actually freeze in there. Uh, and we will see as we come out here later that the top of this is actually going to... Uh, the snow that falls on is going to be melting. So it's just going to be just a little bit above freezing in there. And uh, so it keeps them nice and soft as they get smoked. So this is probably the most tedious part of this process. Because I use a cold smoke, the fish, as you can see, is still raw. And it's very hard to pull the skin of the fish off while it's still raw. Um, which makes it really hard to put it in the jars and uh, can it. So what you have to do is I get my grill up and going and get it really hot. And I just put the fillets on there for a few minutes, each one, so that it cooks the meat right underneath the skin so that it'll easily detach. So I can take them inside, pull the skins right off. Most of the fish is still going to be pretty raw when you do this, but I like to pack it into the jars raw. Uh, I find that it comes out a lot better that way once I get done. Uh, if, it's all, if it's fully cooked when you put it into the jars, I find that it gets too uh, dry once it's done um, getting all cooked up in the jars. So, uh, so we're going to do this. We'll go through it all. This will probably take 10, 15, 20 minutes to do all these fillets uh, and get them done. Uh, and then we'll start putting them into the jars and getting the canning process ready. So we're done grilling them just a little bit. And as you can see, the skin just comes right off of them once they get to this point. Uh, and the whole thing probably took only about, like I said, 10, 15 minutes tops. Get your grill hot. You're gonna have a little bit of uh, skins that stays on there. So burn that off when you're done. Um, and this makes it way easier uh, to get the skins off and put them in the jars. All right, let's get that going. Before you start to put your fish in the cans, you're probably going to want to get your canning apparatus set up. I'm going to show you what I like to use. So this is a Camp Chef Explorer two burner stove. All right. Um, I find it works really good. As you can see, got the flame down there. You can turn it way up, right? Adjust the oxygen flow here. All right, this thing turns. You can adjust it. Get some really good looking flames in there. Turn it up really high. I just have it on low right now because we're just trying to warm this thing up while I put the fish in the cans. Uh, it takes a long time for this pressure cooker to get hot. So if you start heating the water up now and the metal, right? Because this metal is pretty cold sitting out here in the 15 degrees. Uh, it'll go a lot faster once you get the cans in there. Additionally, if you look down in here, I have a little bit of water. So I put about a gallon of water into the bottom of this. You don't need a lot of water for pressure canning. The uh, heat of the steam, the steamy air inside is going to be what cooks the, the cans and gets everything the way they should be. So no need to really uh, fill it up very high. And you don't want it actually over the tops of your jars anyway. So that just hooked up to a propane tank 
and uh, it's gonna get going. So let's go inside and start putting fish in cans. So when I get started canning, I like to lay everything out before I get going because I don't like surprises in the middle of this thing, right? So typically what I do is here are all the jars. I use cans and jars interchangeably. It's all the same thing. You can use cans if you like. I do like the jars myself. Uh, these are all washed and laid out. They don't need to be dry. Um, just make sure they're rinsed really well. Uh, I put all the lids in one container. I put, uh, I should say bands, and then I put all the lids in this other container with some warm water. I don't make it hot, some people do. Uh, I just like it in there because I make sure they're clean before we get started. Got my little workstation here, and then I have all the fish that I'm gonna start putting in the jars. So just take one at a time, we're gonna stuff them full, we're gonna clean the rims, and then we're gonna put the uh, lids and the bands on them, and then we'll put them in the cooker. Now that we've gotten our fish packed into the jars, this is the most critical part of what we're doing because if these lit, if these jars don't seal when we put them in the canner, then we're going to, I mean, it's gonna be a waste. We'll have to roll them again. So what you have to do, this is how I like to do, is you gotta clean these rims right here. There can't be anything on this rim. So what I do is I take a paper towel, I get it wet, and then I just run it around here all the way around, and then I hold the edge up to the light, and I make sure that there's nothing on there but a little bit of water, and then you're good. So that's the most critical part of putting the fish into these cans, or these jars. The other thing you can see is I kind of push them in uh, and squish them down, just depending. So it's packed in there pretty tight, the chunks. Uh, you want as little air in there as possible. And then we put the lids on and the bands, and we'll put them in the cooker. I've started loading the jars into our pressure canner and as you can see they are down there on the bottom. Uh, if you've never canned before notice that they're sitting on kind of a wire rack to keep them up off the bottom. You want a maximum amount of the wet air around it right the steam to be what is actually transferring the heat to uh, the jars. So if you're sitting on the bottom, they'll get too much heat and they can crack. And then once you get a layer in, you need to put another piece of wire down or something so that the next layer sits on top of that. So we'll keep loading this up. We've got the pressure canner all filled up. We got our multiple layers of the half pint jars and then I got the full pint jars that uh, were left over on top and we will step back and we're going to start turning the heat up on this. As you can see, looking pretty good. So I got this all the way up on high. I'm going to keep it there until I get it to about uh, the temperature I want, and then I'm going to have to turn it way down. So let's put the lid on this and. Oh, before we go, it's so one thing. When I put the lid on, this all-american aluminum pressure canner uh, this doesn't have any gaskets or seals on the lid so what you do is i have to take some oil and put it all along this flat part right here along the side and then that is precision <laughs> precisely machined so that the lid fits on it and that oil creates a seal uh, i really like this i've never had there not be a seal and it's always worked really well I was doing a time lapse to show you all this part, but it's 15 degrees out here and my phone was outside too long. So the battery stopped making enough electricity and the phone thought it died when it really hadn't. But it was fine when I warmed it back up inside. So anyway, what I'm showing you now is this is called outgassing. And what this is, is the uh, water inside has to boil and it has to get all of the air out of the inside of the uh, pressure canner so that there's nothing but water vapor inside. And that's what conducts heat better to the jars. If you don't get all the air out, the heat won't conduct right and the, your times will be off. So I've let this do 
basically shoot steam up into the air for about the last eight minutes. And depending on your pressure canner, it'll say in the instructions how long you have to let the, it, this happen. But after that occurs, we take our little thing for our 10 pounds of pressure and we just stick it on there. And now pressure is going to start building up. So I'm going to leave this on high until I get up to 10 pounds of pressure. When the 10 pounds of pressure occurs, this thing will start rattling like that. And then I turn it down until it rattles twice a minute. And that is right where you want it to be. Back out here at the end of the cook, I just took the little thing off that goes on top that keeps it 10 pounds of pressure. You want to make absolutely sure that there's no pressure in here. Okay, so we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lid off and then we are going to take a look at all the stuff inside. got these inside looks like they're all doing pretty good you can see some of them are still bubbling a little bit inside which is good that means they're probably sealed first thing I do after they sit they've been sitting probably here for now oh, going on five minutes is I want to check the seals on all of them and with the low pressure inside of them all of the lid should be sucked down if we touch a lid that clicks, that means it didn't seal, but it looks like none of them are clicking, so it looks like they all seal. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna let them cool so I can actually handle them. That's gonna probably take about an hour before I can start touching them. And then I'm gonna wash them all off and uh, label them and we'll put them in the boxes and they'll be ready to go. Just a few tips when you're doing this. I like to put a towel down on the counter. These jars are like 180, 190 degrees. Um, if you got some counters, it can damage that. Uh, my granite, I don't think it's gonna do that, but I like having the towel down just in case it dissipates the heat. This is what it looks like when we're all done. So I like to wash my jars after I get done with them. And uh, that's because when you're canning in the canning process what will happen a lot of times is a little bit of the oils from the fish will bubble up and come out and get on the jars and if you don't wash that off you're going to grab one of these cans in about six to eight months and you're going to smell it and it's going to smell like rotting fish um, also not very nice to give to people uh, and the box they open smells like old fish so yeah, if you want this to be appealing i recommend washing the jars when you're done after that I label all of them, smoke silver, December 2021. And like I said, this is about how much you get from 40-ish pounds of fish. So I got, looks like a case and a half of the pint jars and two cases of the half pint jars. So obviously the last thing you need to do once you're done making your fish is you gotta taste it, make sure it's good. So here's the can, this was the leftovers. You see it didn't fill it up all the way. So this is a can I always use to do our taste test with. So I'm gonna open this up. Mm, smells good. Nice and tender. Oh yeah. That is some salty, smoky goodness. So I'll save the rest of this for later. I can put it in the fridge. And that's it. That is how you can fish.